How's it going everybody? This is Bang Bang Bone. I have another video for you. I'm really excited about this video. I wanted to share this with everyone for a long time now. I just haven't really gotten to it. What I have here for you today is very special to me. It is a working replica of my favorite handgun, I guess you could call it, in World War II. Uh, this, to me, embodies kind of like the Second Amendment and basically your natural right to protect yourself. Basically, this was produced so that, the, you know, people occupied by Nazi forces can get these airdropped by the U.S., find it on the ground, pick it up, put a 45 caliber bullet in it, and uh, shoot a Nazi and take his gun. So this, this handgun, for me at least, it represents arming your population and your people and, and giving those people the right to defend themselves and, and fight you know, for their lives and their country. Um, so this gun, at least the idea of it, uh, is very special to me in that sense. Um, was it as effective? I don't think so. I produced like a million of them and I'm, I'm not sure how many even ever got used. Uh, they have like one picture of a Japanese soldier with it like in his belt. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, a little shout out to the company that makes them. I'm, I'm glad they do. Vintage Ordinance Company, um, that's their information. Uh, not, I don't know them at all, but they were pretty friend friendly when I was um, uh, asking questions about the firearm, they were responsive um, and uh, shipped it out quickly and, and, and well. Uh, so the name of this is actually the FP45 Liberator Pistol. Liberator, if you get the point that I just made, um, I have, they're, they're all low serial numbers. I think that they only make them to order right now. It's, it's probably around 350 of them are available. The reproductions that is, if you got a real one in this condition, it would probably be worth around $6,000. I paid with shipping and transfer fees. I got gutted like a pig because I'm in New Jersey. Transfer fees are like $60 and the background check is like 15. So anyway, it was around like $650, maybe even, it's like $700 all together with a box of uh, 45 ACP. So the price is is not is not fun, but I it, it means a lot to me and it's worth it to me. A lot of you are gonna make fun of me when I open this box shortly, and you'll see that it's literally just a bunch of sheet metal slapped together, and you'll call me an idiot, and rightfully so. Uh, so it came with, you know, the Raider box set, uh, the waxed box, just like I said. Um, I'll show you. It's waxed. I think they did that to make it kind of water resistant. Uh, you know, again, the 40s, they didn't have, I mean, they probably had plastic, but not anything that could be produced as quickly and cheaply as a waxed cardboard box uh, to make it a little waterproof. Um, and then they also have uh, the wooden rod, wooden spacer. Sorry, my computer just made noise. Um, and the instruction sheet. So without further ado, I will take this bad boy out. This is a little spacer. I think that's just to keep it together from not bouncing around. This is the dowel. You would use it to eject the spent casing after firing it. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the Liberator pistol. And this is the instruction set and the empty box. Okay, you can see the wax seeped in there. You can fold this. I, I just haven't. Um, I might, but I don't really know how it's supposed to go together exactly. So I'm gonna have to look that up. I don't know if it's supposed to go in between like this, these two pieces or inside, I'm not sure. So I'll figure that out one day. Uh, Cause otherwise if I leave it like this, it's probably gonna get broken off or ripped off. So I really should close it. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll leave that box aside. There's nothing else on it. It's just that picture that you were staring at. The rest is just blank wax. So I'll go over the pistol first. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if this is supposed to be on the front or the back. I didn't look up prior to the video, but like you can see, it's just a bunch of stamped sheet metal <laughs> excuse me and 
it, it looks like a piece of crap and really it, it was a piece of crap it was designed to function for maybe 15 shots and uh that's it like you, you really you basically had one shot if you're gonna shoot a nazi you, you basically wanted to go up against them sneak up shoot him in the back of the head or whatever take his gun kill his buddies they take his their guns and you know you start a little mini revolt um because they weren't expecting you to have a firearm you know so the way it works is very basic design no safeties um you just pull this back okay rotate it it's off to the side you pull this up it's a little tough and there's the barrel like uh just just in there now this because of uh federal regulations the barrel is rifled and they did have to put uh, the caliber and, and all that stuff and the serial number is right there. It didn't have any of these markings uh, at the time uh, because they're, you know, it was, it was war, man. They didn't, <laughs> you know, they, they didn't care about that stuff and it, it wasn't anything, uh, you know, it was, it would have been too costly to produce a rifled barrel. I think it was like $3.50 altogether to make that adjusted for Today's money, I have no idea what that would be. Maybe tops, I don't know. I'm not even gonna guess. I'm gonna sound like an idiot. Maybe 20 bucks, I don't know. Someone look that up, thanks. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you would put the bullet in. I'm not gonna close it, cause it's dangerous. I, I'm not gonna put the firing pin down. But then you would turn this back, which I'll show you. I'm gonna take the shell out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah. You drop this down so now it's unloaded so it's safe to do that and you twist it until it lines up with that little guide hole i think that earlier on they didn't really have a guide hole because it was cheap this might even not be historically correct i'm not positive but i think they did put this little guide bar to help it land but um that's that and you just pull the trigger and then it, it just goes off and it's um not a very heavy trigger but it slams shut goes off and i've heard i haven't personally gotten to shoot this yet but i've heard that the kick is extremely painful i heard that you know people get their web of their hand caught in this or like this will bite them because it's not smooth this is much better put together than the ones uh that they made in world war ii <coughs> excuse me man of course I have a cough now that I'm recording. Um, but yeah, the sights, not really that great. I, I don't know. I guess if you were carrying this around, you could kind of have it like that as, as its own safety. And then just go like that. Um, or maybe pull it back so then it, it's gently on there and then just pull it back like that. I think that would, that's probably the best way to do it, actually, come to think of it. So you would have a bullet in the chamber, pull it out, leave it. When, you know, when once you're ready to shoot, you pull it out and then shoot it. But, but while the bullet's in the chamber, I think you'd be able to just do that. I'm not going to test it. I don't have a dummy around, so I'm not going to do that. But that's that. That's basically how it works. They had 10 rounds in here. You got the test bullet. They did test fire this. That's what it looks like on the inside. Nothing special. They would stack them. I'll show you in the instructions shortly um, how it looked. But that's that. And uh, the plate itself, just a little thin piece of metal. You can slide it back like that. I, oops, of course. I like to have it like this, or I'm sorry, like this, because it has a, uh, it's kind of like a little pinky rest when I have it like that. So let me throw that back. All right. Now, something I forgot to mention is uh, when you shot the cartridge, you'd use this dowel rod to just jam it out of there. Okay. Um, I'm not positive if this had a purpose or not. I'm really doing you guys a disservice by not looking up, looking this up in more detail, but hey, uh, the internet's there and you guys can 
do your own research, learn some stuff about World War II that you may not have known. So I'm going to set this aside and uh, show you the instruction manual. Something about the instruction manual, with the exception of it saying instructions in English on it, it was all pictures and then numbers. So then someone who didn't speak English, when they literally, they airdropped these like from planes. That was like the plan. And I think they did, probably like, like a million of them. Um, it said instructions. Naturally, if, if you get a, a gun dropping out of the sky, you're probably gonna be pretty curious. I'm not sure if they had bullets in here. I, I think it was just in the firearm itself. But this is literally what it looked like. Um, it can't fit in my, my camera, but step one, pull this back. Step two, turn it. Step three, lift that thing. Step four, put the bullet in. Step five, close that bad boy. Step six, rotate it back. Step seven, pull the damn trigger. Step eight, pull the thing back. Step nine, twist it around. Step 10, lift it up. Step 11, push the bullet out. And step 12 is, you know, probably should have been step zero, but here are the bullets. Um, they stacked them just like that to fit them neat. So I believe you had 10 shots of 45 ACP, but those are the instructions. Um, apologize for having a uh, kind of a crappy, I guess I'll do this, but it's pretty lame. I have, a, I have a bad setup for recording videos. That's the full, full thing there, no instructions. So I'm gonna fold this back up. Um, that's basically it for the video. Um, I really appreciate you guys checking this out. And um, I know that this was very expensive for what I'm getting, but what I'm getting is something that I see value in and that speaks to me from a historical standpoint and basically, I guess, ideological standpoint of, you know, me believing that everyone has the right to defend themselves uh, people should be armed uh, so that, you know, if you have some Nazi force occupying your freaking country, you can just you can fight back, you know, um, or defend your, your home, your family, your country, whatever. Um, bad guys are always gonna, gonna have, have something, whether it's legal or not, or, you know, you're in a war. Um, so this pistol is uh embodies all that and it's it's a crazy not very well known piece of history something actually really cool about this pistol is recently there was a uh the video game battlefield 5 and one of the last handguns that you unlock is the liberator pistol and let me tell you it's really cool to have have a gun that's in a video game it's even cooler to have something like this that's in a video game more people are gonna learn about it. They're gonna be like, what the hell is this piece of crap? They're gonna look it up. Some of them will find out, maybe even find this video because of that video game. And they'll say, oh, Liberator Pistol. Um, and it, maybe it'll spark some interest in, in firearms for them. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys stopping by to check out this video. Uh, let me know if you, you like weird guns like this. Um, I, I tend to gravitate towards really weird things, unique things. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks again for checking out the video. I hope you learned something. Maybe you got to see just a cool real life version of, of something that's in a video game or, or something that you heard about. And now you, now you know more about it and, and what it looks like and what it's like to hold one or see someone hold one. <laughs> um, but that's it. Uh, please check out my other videos. Uh, like, subscribe. I'll be putting out more content. Uh, my goal is to hit a thousand subscribers. Uh, full full disclosure, because then I can start monetizing my videos uh, if they even let me at that point. Because I have some gun videos, but I also do other things like watches. I'm going to start doing watch uh, reviews more. Um, I haven't done this one. It's my Seiko Five uh, piece. Not a piece of crap. It's a nice watch, but. Um, anyway, I'll have other content, um, so it'll, it'll be worth subscribing. Do it. Thanks.